All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golem from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeline CRM, coming to you from a sunny San Diego here in the U.S. And today I'm joined by Antonio Nieto Rodriguez, who is native or originally from Spain, but is now domiciled in Brussels in Belgium. How are you doing, Antonio? Hi, John. Nice to to be in your podcast. I look forward to our conversation. Thank you. Absolutely. So Antonio is the world's leading champion of product management and strategy implementation, and he's the creator of concepts such as hierarchy of purpose. And that's what we wanted to talk about today. So and maybe before we even start, Antonio, why do you say that everything in life is really a project today? Well, John, this is something, this is a trend I've been researching for years. And and what you can see is what I call the project economies, um, businesses and, and industries which were not project-based. You will see projects in consulting company and in, in branding companies, but not in a normal company like a pharma company or an energy company. They were much more structured by um, hierarchy, by mm -hmm. silos and by business units. But today with the need of speed, the need of agility, what you see is a trend towards more transversal work. It's end-to-end, it's, -end. it's, it's shorter cycles. So you have a different way of organizing the teams. And, and uh, so that leads to more projects, which is, I'm sure, not surprising for many of your listeners. There, there's one by projects. There's more and more projects. And, and we, we struggle to, to prioritize them. We struggle to execute them. We struggle to get any value for them. So that's what I call the project economy. We are all becoming... Uh, somehow project managers of or or careers and of our lives. Yeah, I know I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think one of the one of the reasons um, that this is happening is if you think about it, is there are so many very specialized types of work now. So say if you're in marketing, like SEO is specialized, um, maybe pay per click advertising. That's a whole specialization. So when you want to run a campaign or something. You don't you don't normally have all these experts as employees on your t you know just sitting around waiting. You have to you know take get different skill sets sometimes get contractors whatever and put them together in a project team. Exactly, exactly, and and jobs don't last forever anymore. <laughs> it's not like uh, it's it's like a season in football or you play for nine months and that's a project and the next year you might play in another team mm -hmm. or you play in a different position. So we are not used to that. It's very, very scary for the people who have been traditional career into a ladder and, and so on. That doesn't work anymore. So it's, it's panic for many people, but there's a lot of opportunities and, and uh, it can be very interesting. Yeah, and I think it's an interesting point there that you make about the, the analogy with uh, yeah playing one season at a team and then maybe moving to another but i think uh, it is scary for people who have you know grown up with the idea maybe their parents had you know were 30 40 years at a job and maybe yeah. earlier in their career they were 10 15 years at a job and now those things have changed but the other thing is it does allow more mobility and flexibility for the employee exactly. too right exactly so once people get through the that phase of uh, uncertainly, I, I have many friends who work in banking, in different industries, which I don't know, it seems like they've been 20 years finance controller and then moved to a project. And, and now I'm a project leader. So many people move from a fixed job to a project leader. It's like seems to be like that bu bucket where everybody ends up. Uh, after some years in their careers and they love it they they love the diversity every six years there's a new challenge they work with very different people than just finance i'm sure in sales that happens too so i think once you go to that phase then uh yeah there's a lot of pros as well in this world so um what is your as we get into the hierarchy of, of purpose though when when somebody that's a great example you just used so if somebody's used to um <clears throat> you know, working in a department, working on a fixed set of tasks, you know, and repetitive every day. And then they have to suddenly go and do project based work or become a project leader. What are some of the challenges that they face making that transition? Well, I think letting go is one of the most important parts is trying to stick to the past. I, I see that every year 
again and again. People have difficulties. They want to stay in a stable world where we know is not the case. Mm -hmm. So I think letting go is the first step. Is let go, try to learn. I think you hear that more and more. We're in a in the learning, a continuous learning world. You cannot stop learning. Projects offer you that opportunity. So look at the positive side. Try to learn. Uh, get get acquainted with some fundamentals of projects. We all do projects, John. You've mm -hmm. done projects. Me too. Yes. It took me years to understand the basics. And, and we're not taught at university, high school, uh, how to lead projects, how to manage. So it's not that complex, at least to grasp the, the essentials. Yeah, you, you will need years to be a scheduler for a manufacturing plant. Mm -hmm. But we don't want that. We just mm -hmm. want to understand projects and do them better. So... Uh, I would recommend to first move on, second, look at the bright side, and third, le learn some basics. And you can come off very strong into uh, uh, leadership again position because you're managing a small company. A project is a small mm -hmm. company. You have a budget, you have some benefits, you have a team, you have milestones, you have to execute. So it, it's kind of challenging and exciting job too, John. Yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree, and you know, some of my most enjoyable experience have been leading, um, have been yeah. leading projects, uh, and I think today is there is that uh, there's obviously that balance between doing a project, re you know, delivering it really well, but also delivering it fast, right? So the the speed and agility is just as important today. And that, uh, and that uh, obviously not everybody's always ready for that. So how do you, how do you help people um, execute projects, you know, execute them fast, but still with the quality and the result they're looking for? Well, I, uh, I develop a small canvas. I call it the project canvas. It's part mm -hmm. of my latest book, The Project Revolution, which in, in one page, you can assess whether a project is well fundamented. You have the essentials in mind. It's a question-based uh, framework. Very simple. First, you start with why are we doing the project? You cannot imagine, John, how many projects start mm -hmm. without a why. It's just uh, uh, you have a business case, but you know business cases are always a bit fluffy and and they can be a bit kind of uh, put makeup so that they always look good. Business cases always look good, by the way. So uh, it's about understanding why the project matters to you, to your organization. That will drive the team to execute that. It's not the financials, it's the why, the purpose. And that's why I came with the, the concept of the hierarchy of purpose. People are driven today by purpose, John, you know that. And this is what I ask people to learn. Why is the project so important? And that's how I start. And, and this is basic questions. There's about six to seven questions which I teach people to ask so that you get the basics of the project. Yeah, so that's it. so. I, I like that idea, though the that the why, because I do think that is that's incredibly important. Because and even if some people, if they have the why at the beginning, sometimes they forget the why as they get into the project, right? So you have to keep revisiting, um, and sometimes when people forget the why of the project, the project starts to grow in scope or starts to go in a wrong direction. So revisiting yeah. the why regularly is something that's uh, very important, right? I love it. I love what you're saying. Yes, exactly. Revisit the why. Because in three months, the world will be different. Your company mm -hmm. will... Maybe you need to stop that project. It's not bad to stop mm -hmm. or refocus a project. It's actually very healthy. People don't do that because they're afraid to be blamed or so. But actually, best companies, they do that. So I love the reassessing of the why, uh, John, I, I will take that. I think yeah. it's a good advice. I, I always say to people, uh, to be honest, Antonio, I always say don't get married to your projects, right? Because <laughs> because it's let's true. face it, you're 100% you're correct, is you may start a project and it may be the most critical project to the company and then something happens, right? Some business changes, exactly. something happens and suddenly you have maybe put in two months of like exceptional work and I come to you and say, great work, Antonio, but guess what? I, I need you to stop doing that. We need to head in this direction now. And that's tough for people, right? It's painful. It's it's painful. It's like you say, it's like a marriage. It's, mm -hmm. it's like stopping a relationship. And actually, you need to step out and say, no, you're right. And we learned that from there. Let's not 
lose that and let's use it here so that you get better. So I love it. Yes, it's a, it's kind of a marriage and a, 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 an important relationship which should not be the case. Yeah, yeah, exactly, because it's that flexibility. So tell me about the hierarchy of purpose. What do you mean by that? Well, basically, John, I, I, I've been working as director of projects in several companies, uh, companies, banking, pharma, where we had 800 projects. And, and the question was from the people below the executive saying, where are the priorities? Where, mm. how, how can we actually know project B is more important than project Z. And, and so I've been struggling a lot to help executives to prioritize. And I apply all the techniques available in the world where it's, well, try for each project to have a business case, quantify the benefits, try, all very methodical. But when you have 800 projects and when capturing data of projects is very time consuming, um, I thought it would take me a couple of years to just try to get the data of 800 projects. It's impossible. So I've been working more towards the purpose and I use the purpose to prioritize projects. So um, basically, what's the purpose of the company? What do we want to achieve in the long term? And that's one of the key criteria that we will use when we have to choose projects. It's not so much the business case. That's important, mm -hmm. but the purpose will drive. Is this project aligned with our purpose? Yes or no? That is an easy answer, which everybody can answer. And that will help us to eliminate all the clutter, all the projects, and focus on the most important. So the higher people purpose is, is built on five um, elements. The first one is the purpose, John, mm -hmm. yep. which helps you to prioritize the projects. Then you have to have some kind of additional priorities. Is it about growth? Is it about digital? Is it about improving sales and so on so that will help you to prioritize your projects which mm -hmm. is the third element so purpose priorities projects the projects are essential and this is where you drive that change that you drive that innovation uh, that agility fourth is the people you need people uh, to run your projects to execute them you need high performing teams and the last element the first fifth p it's about performance. So mm -hmm. in performance, one of the challenges I see in projects is the performance indicators of projects have been very uh, inward focused. So it's just right. about the time, the scope, the budget. Uh, these are the internal kitchen. The, the public, the stakeholders, the clients want to know value. So mm -hmm. it's more about how much value has this project delivered to me. Not so much about the time and the scope. That's important, but not for the external people. So I'm working with performance indicators who focus more on the impact of the project yeah. on the external phase, not the internal, which is fine, but that's the internal kitchen. People don't care. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you'll find that uh, the the key performance indicators are somewhat backward looking. They're not leading exactly. indicators, they're lagging indicators. And let's face it, if you lagging indicators are obviously important because they give you historical context. But they're too late um, to course, late. course correct anything, right? Yeah, you cannot do anything. It's like playing tennis, but you know the score already. What can you do? Yeah. You're already lost. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously important um, that you that when you're putting your KPIs together, that some of them are le at least some of them are leading indicators, so you can you know, make changes. The other thing I like you're saying here about uh, prioritization and making choices, this is, I would find, this is the thing that a lot of companies struggle with because it's like, would they say, which is a priority? They say, well, they're all priorities. And you say, well, yeah. if, well, if they're all priorities, then none of them are priorities, right? Because if everything's a priority, nothing's a priority. And, Absolutely. and that, and the other thing that you mentioned about, you know, maybe getting rid of some of the things, here's another one, right? is you know if you say to people what pro if you had a meeting and you said what are the top projects we need to execute this year right people would have no problem naming a lot of projects and adding a few if you said to them okay which are the projects we're going to get rid of and we're not going to do suddenly everybody's exactly. silent right yeah yeah cuz nobody wants to make that decision like let's get rid of this and focus on this exactly it's a painful choice john i always when i do a a prioritization exercise or or a strategic exercise. I tell the leaders, guys, if at the end of the meeting you all feel good, 
we didn't do strategy. We right. didn't do it. We had a nice meeting. We discussed about the weather and the football. But your role is to take painful decisions. Mm -hmm. It has to be uncomfortable. Strategy is painful. If we don't finish the meeting with painful decisions, then forget it. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a great. I think that's a great. That's a great point because yeah, it should be, it should be tough and it should be it should be a pro it should be and let's face it, going through a process of prioritization and strategy and strategic decision making, as you say, should be tough because if it's done well, it means it means that you've made some choices, but by making some choices, you've by definition chosen not to do some other things. Exactly. It I love it, John. You, you you make it even more clear than me. The one one great example I'm writing another article right now is it's about uh, one of the big, best projects I've ever researched is the first iPhone. It was called Project Purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, Purpose, sorry. Uh, and that the first idea of the iPhone uh, was launched in Apple in 2001. 2001. The Project Purpose started in 2004 it took three years for apple to say now we go seriously into the iphone we're going to do a project three years of exploration of prototyping on but i think the, the key question here is it took three years of exploration it was a time of reflection where steve joe was saying no guys the priority at this moment in apple is the itunes and the ipod that's mm -hmm. all right and that and that takes and that so takes a lot of courage. Yeah. yeah, the idea is great. We love that. There's an industry which is booming, and we can transform that industry. But it's not the right time. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. And I love that because it takes courage to make decisions like that. Yeah, to say wait, explore, but then give, we'll tell you when the right time is to start the project, and then we go full blown. That's the yeah. other thing. Okay, in the last couple of moments we have here, Antonio, um, how much do you think that organizations, um, how much would you encourage organizations to start investing in actually helping train their people how to lead projects and what good project management looks like? Because I think it's normally, in, in a lot of companies, there's very few people who have any training in real project yeah. management. Most of us ended up managing projects because we happened to be in, in a certain place at a certain time and we kind of figured it out as we went. Yeah, exactly. And I think what you see today's trainings are, they don't have an impact. It's just a nice day that you spend abroad. So I do work with companies and executives where you create more a development program where you build competencies, not just on the project managers, on the executives. Too, I, I never train a manager if I cannot train the executives mm -hmm. because they play a big role not just on choosing the projects but supporting the project, the role of the sponsor, executive sponsor. It's about 40% of the success of a project. They don't know it. Mm -hmm. They launch a project. They love to launch a project. But that means also accountability on the delivery. And, and, and if the executives do actually their work, most of the projects are successful. I have... Uh, an anecdote, uh, John, in, in a company I was working, the CEO comes to see me and see me. I ask him, how many projects are you the sponsor? I don't really know. I think about 18 to 19. I think, I think Mark, that's a bit too much. And he said, yeah, it's too much. And there's three projects of the 19 that I sponsor, that I'm participating in a meeting. I take decisions. I support them. Mm -hmm. three, three projects are perfect. We struggle, but we get, we get them. We, mm -hmm. we, we got how about the, the other 15? Well, they're all disaster. You <laughs> see, Mark, your role is so important. Don't take 18, take three. Yeah. So that's what I teach executives. They play a big role in the success. It's not just delivering training for managers. That we can do, of course, we can provide the framework, uh, something they can, hands-on, it has to be hands-on, um, and, and then uh, the executives. So it's just more a workshop building mm -hmm. the competencies. Great. Well, listen, we're up against the end of our time here. Antonio, this has been fantastic. But before we go, uh, do you want to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you? Well, sure. I think the easiest way is by social media or my website. My name is AntonioNietoRodriguez.com. LinkedIn, um, <clears throat> it's another way to reach out. Unfortunately, with LinkedIn, you know, you have 30,000 contacts. And you're stuck, so I'm stuck. And but I do accept uh, clean up, and then 
So LinkedIn is always good, social media, Google, and, and you are connected. And I love to hear people, especially from the sales world. I think uh, one one thing I, I, I think sales is moving into project as well. Mm-hmm. I wrote an article about the transformation that companies are not selling products anymore. They're selling projects. And, mm-hmm. and I think sales has to play a big role there. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree with you more. Well, listen, Antonio, this has been fantastic. I'll let you get back to your evening in Brussels in yeah. Belgium. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I'll see you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.